the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> my, my, my real worry is that it doesn't matter what we think is right that technology always goes towards innovation. It always goes towards improvements. It always goes towards technology advancing where it's more effective, more available, easier, better, cheaper, faster. This is what we always do. This is what we've done with every single thing we've ever invented. And it's got to happen with that as well. But I think the difference between our position is that you think the march of technology is completely inevitable and, and that there's nothing we can do to kind of shape it or stop it. It's just going to happen. Whereas I think I think none of this is inevitable. And I think human beings are, are capable of, uh, you know, adapting and changing without technology. And like this year is a really good example of this, that we're all waiting for a vaccine. The vaccine is not arrived and so we we've kind of saved ourselves by changing our behavior and changing our behavior in a kind of altruistic way by staying at home even though like we might not get sick with coronavirus or wearing masks for other people's benefit i think human beings are really adaptable and we we can adapt by changing our behavior rather than relying on technology and this march of technology only exists if we continue to always think that technology is the, is the solution people have to make this stuff and people have to buy this stuff in, in order for it to march on. And we always have the power to say, you know what, I don't want it. I think reasonable people like yourself, yes, that's going to happen. But clearly you've seen videos of spring break in Fort Lauderdale where kids are <laughs> n n making out half naked on the beach. Nobody gives a fuck about coronavirus. And then there's maps that show the spread of them leaving Florida and going all through the rest of the country yeah, and then all these infections that show up there. Totally, but there's a critical mass of, there's enough people that are being reasonable that when those things happen, it's really shit and, and people get ill, but it's not the end of the world. That's the point. I think most people uh, are, are reasonable and are able to behave in a kind of way where, where the good kind of wins out. I think I agree with you on a lot of these things. However, when I look at human beings, I try to look at human beings as if I was from another planet, if I was an alien, and I looked at them without any connection to the way they think or behave or their culture. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do these things do? Well, this is what they do. They make technology. All they do is make technology. They're obsessed with materialism, which plays into technology. It plays into this want and need for the bigger, better, faster, greater thing that comes around every year, and that's what fuels them to work every day. They go to work, and they, they toil, and one of the things they, they reward themselves with is the newest, greatest thing. And this is the fuel for this technological growth, and this technological growth appears unstoppable because it seems like that's all the human animal does if you looked at it from afar objectively all i'm seeing is a constant wave of technology but i don't think that's true because we don't just make technology we also talk to each other and we communicate like you and i are now and we have discussions and we are capable of incredible change and that we could live in a world where uh you know it was okay to keep slaves and impregnate your wife every year and and keep her in the kitchen but through having these discussions we can really really change the way we live very drastically from one generation to the next it's not just technology you know it's also what defines a human being is that we use technology and that we're social animals. And those are two different things. And, and the idea that the, the, the technological advancement is always going to win out isn't necessarily one I buy. I'm not saying it's going to win out. I don't think it's going to win out. I think it's just, it's inevitable. And I think we're going to... But they're both inevitable. And, and, and as a society, we can make change just as much as we can make change by using technology. Yeah, that is the fascinating balance, right? I mean, most people are, today are aware that they're addicted to their cell phones, yet most people still use their cell phones. It, we were aware that it's harming us, but yet we still use them because we just go, oh, it's just a phone. No big deal. But you know it's a big deal. Everybody, I know it's a big deal. I know I check my messages too much, but yet I still check my messages too much. And, I, and I'm aware of it. And I've read a lot of books about it. But and I think if you thought it was harming you enough, mm. if you thought it was destroying your brain cells you wouldn't. Right. The point is, it, it's about, it's about the, how you weigh up harm and you think, yeah, you know, I should probably be doing other things or I shouldn't be constantly checking the Twitter feed of that person I hate that's, you know, bad for my soul. But you still do it <laughs> because it's bad for your soul, but only a little bit. And if it was yeah. really, really corrosive and bad, then, then you would stop. I mean, yeah, maybe so if much. you're a healthy person or maybe you're one of those people that likes to pick scabs and you just, you, you just keep scratching. That's possible too. Yeah. 
I'm I'm worried for people. I, I really genuinely am. And it, this is as a person who enjoys people. I just I don't know how much time we have left as in this form. Like when I look at the um, archetypal alien, when you see those uh, little gray men with the big heads, I'm I'm worried that what that is is like we instinctively know that that's our future, that we're we're going to be these genderless weird things that <laughs> reproduce through some sort of uh, you know some sort of some sort of technology instead of these bizarre imperfect biological creatures with emotions that we you and I both enjoy so much because of all those all the weirdness I mean my whole business everything I do is about the weirdness of people mm -hmm. whether it's stand-up comedy it's whether it's podcasts or even fighting when I do commentary on fighting that's all the weirdness and imperfect mm. nature of the human animal and I think it's awesome I mean I, I love people don't get me wrong I'm not rooting for technology to do this but I, I see the writing on the wall and it's it's not pretty well, the thing is, it's all about the richness of the human experience, what makes it interesting to be human, which isn't just the basic functions of our life or, or, or basic logic. You know, the fact that we have art galleries everywhere and mm -hmm. music, you know, yes. music, which is completely, completely illogical. Yes. It's because there's more to being human than those basic functions. I and mean, when you talk about, you know, sexless aliens reproducing without sex, like that kind of stuff is going to happen quite soon. And, I, yes. you know, I, I, look, I looked into quite a lot of this. That we, we can make, like, gametes. We can make cells. They can do this in mice. You can make sperm and eggs out of cheek cells. So you could make an egg out of your cheek cell and sperm. It, there'll be a future where people can make sperm and egg whichever one they need for whichever relationship they're in and that you can grow a baby outside the human body mm. and we will become less and less gendered. That is going to happen. Yeah. You know, the end of sex for reproduction is quite possible that we will just have sex for fun and then we'll do babies in this kind of very controlled way. Um, but we're always going to be weird, human beings. We're always going to like strange things, like dancing around to music, all the stuff that can't, can't be explained. And, and the drive to be weird and the drive to, to, to be illogical is very, very powerful. And I, I just think... I think we. I'm not so deterministic about stuff. And and when I was when I was like doing the, all the work for my book, I was quite worried it was going to be really depressing because you know in in a book like mine, like you come you come to a conclusion where it's like, well, there's a future where women might be obsolete, where we can be replaced by robots and and artificial uteruses, and you know, misogynist men can live without us, or uh, you know, all of these things that are really dark and worrying. But that's that's to buy a particular view of human nature as um, as being a kind of slave to whatever comes next and we're too kind of weird and idiosyncratic i think to be done away with that easily episodes of the joe rogan experience are now free on spotify that's right they're free from september 1st to december 1st they're going to be available everywhere but after december 1st they will only be available on spotify but they will be free that includes the video the video will also be there it'll also be free that's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye.